In this video, I'm going to go through a short demo of Parasoft Virtualize and Environment Manager. I'm going to go through how to use and create a virtual asset, and you can see how easy it is. Just to give you a brief introduction, Virtualize is used to simulate any backend service, whether it's a SOAP-based service or a database service. And Environment Manager allows you to control anything that you've created in Virtualize. And the advantage of having Environment Manager is that you don't have to have a person who knows how to use Virtualize to use all of Virtualize services. So essentially, you have a simple web interface that connects to Virtualize, and it allows you to use the services that Virtualize provides. Let me walk you through Environment Manager and show you how you can use it on a daily basis. So I have Environment Manager open here, and I have a description of two of my systems. What Environment Manager allows you to do is paint a picture of your system. It allows you to define what components are part of your system and how they interlink. The advantage of this is you can connect each of those components to either real services or virtualized services. So for example, in my particular system, I have a web page or a mobile device that connects to a web service. The web service connects to a mid-tier system and the mid-tier system connects to three different backend components. One is a third party system, one is a customer database, and one is a loan processor web service. This particular system describes a simple banking site that allows you to process particular loans. So now what I want to do is go into the banking website and go through a number of scenarios from a developer or QA person's perspective. I'm going to log in. And as you can see, there are a couple of options that I have. <clears throat> I can get details on the account. I can pay a bill. But the one that I'm interested in is request loan. So I'm going to go ahead and click on request loan. Let me apply for a loan for $500 with a down payment of 200. And I'm going to hit apply now. Right now, the system is connected to the real backend. While it's connected to the real backend, you can see I got an error on my front end. This error doesn't really provide me much information. I don't know why there's an error. I don't know what part of the system has broken down. So from my perspective, this could be happening for a number of reasons. So now let me go back into Environment Manager and click on Development Environment, which is the one I'm using. The other advantage of using Environment Manager is the fact that it allows you to do a health check on each of your connected components. So as you can see, so my mid-tier system is connected to three different components. My third-party system is online. My customer database is also online. However, my loan processor, you can see, is currently offline. So what's happening here is that my real loan processor is down, and it could be down for a number of reasons. From my perspective, it doesn't really matter why it's down. All I want to do is test my front end. So what I can do is simulate my backend loan processor web server. Now I've already created a virtualized instance of it using recorder graphic. So what I'm going to do is switch from the real loan to virtualized loan dynamic. And I'm going to hit provision. So what this will do is switch from the real loan processor to my virtualized instance of it. So now I switched to my virtualized instance of the loan processor. Now this virtualized instance of the loan processor was created from recording of real traffic. And what this allows you to do is have dynamic responses. So for example, when I do a loan amount of $100 with a down payment of 20, I get a response from virtualized dynamic loans, which is my virtualized instance, and I get the status of approved. However, when I request a loan of more than 1,000, let's say 1,100, and a down payment of 200, I get a response saying that the loan has been denied. The reason for this is because the responses are dynamic. It does inspect the loan amount based on set data. It says either the loan should be approved or it should be denied. Now that you've got an idea of how Virtualize works and what responses you get from it, I want to go into Virtualize. So this is the interface to Virtualize. And if any of you have used Sotas before, it looks very similar. On my left, I have a couple of virtual assets which I've created. 
the power bank dynamic. This is the virtual asset that we were using right now. And you can see I have one responder called request loan, which is sending my response for any of those loan requests. Under my data repository is a table created from the recorded traffic. And what this allows me to do is for each loan amount and down payment have a particular response. So for example, for loan amount 500, my response is false. If I go back, you can see there's also buckets that have been created. So for any loan amount that's greater than 1000, I'm sending back a response of false. And you can create multiple buckets such as this. So it allows you to respond to a wide range of requests. As I was mentioning before, Virtualize can support multiple message structures and protocols. So for example, if you have HTTP, JMS, or MQ service, all of these are supported out of the box. If you want to virtualize a database, you can also use the SQL responder tool. Now what I want to do is walk you through how you can record traffic and create a virtual asset out of it. To record traffic, your real system must be up and running that you want to virtualize. So for example, in my scenario, the loan processor that I'm trying to virtualize was down. I restarted it and now it's working. So what I want to do is create a virtual asset from the real loan processor. And the way my mid-tier system is connected to my real loan processor is through an intermediate proxy from Virtualize. So the mid-tier system goes to the Virtualize proxy and the Virtualize proxy forwards it to the real loan processor. And in the middle, the Virtualize loan proxy will be recording any traffic. So let me switch it to my real loan processor. Now what I'm going to do is start recording. So now any traffic going from my real loan processor, so any traffic going from my front end to my real loan processor will be recorded by Virtualize. So if I make a loan amount of $100, I got back a response saying approved. If I make a loan response, loan request of 500, it was approved. Now let me make a loan request of five of 50,000 and this was denied. So I made three requests and I got three responses and all of that was recorded from Virtualize. Now what I'm going to do is stop the recording. You can see my recording has been saved and now it's asking me if I want to create a virtual asset from it. I'm going to hit now. It, so it's asking me for some information. I'm going to call it real loan copy and I'll leave it as is and it finished. So now my virtual asset has been created. You can see there's a new virtual asset called real loan copy aside from my other ones. So that's really how easy it is to create a new virtual asset. And now I have a new virtual asset called real loan copy. So the other functionality that Virtualize gives you is to add a delay to your responses. This is very useful when you want to simulate the response time as compared to your real system. So for example, if your real system responds in 300 milliseconds, and you want to make sure that Virtualize also responds in that time, you can add a delay to it. You can turn off and on the delay straight from Environment Manager. So for example, over here, so you can see here I have a performance profile between normal, slow, and dynamic. If I switch it to the slow one and I hit provision, so now when I make a loan request, you can see the response will come back in five seconds. This is because of the delay that I added. So in Environment Manager, there's the idea of the marketplace. So the marketplace has two options, the public marketplace and the private marketplace. The public marketplace is essentially virtual assets and plugins that are created by Parasoft and they upload it. So you can see if you have a custom protocol such as an SAP protocol, a FTP protocol, a custom TCP IP protocol, all of them are up there in the public marketplace. So you can see uh, there's a plugin for Jenkins, there's a plugin for Jira, there's a, and the private marketplace can be used to store and share any virtual asset created by any team. So for example, if one team creates a virtual asset for customer information, another team can access it through the private marketplace. And that's a short demo of Parasite Virtualize and Environment Manager.